So we got some fun stuff here today, folks. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to browse KEH and look for well, cameras that I know that I like uh, and things that are interesting or things I didn't know about. And a few days ago, I saw this Argus C3 listed as being broken for $12, and I thought that would be a fun project if I can find something else to tack onto that order, try and figure out what's broken with it, see if it is at all salvageable. And it just so happened the other day while I was looking that I found this Wallensack 8-inch 5.6 Raptor telephoto lens that should fit the uh, Century and Speed graphic that I'm still slowly picking away at. That was listed as um, as is for like 20 bucks. I was like, cool, I need something with a little more reach. And worst case scenario, as long as it is open and it focuses, I can use it on the speed graphic once I have that all hooked back together. And I mean, it looks to me like it's just a little stiff and needs uh, maybe a little bit of cleaning. The, uh, the shutter cocking is a little sticky, but all the speeds seem pretty on point. Which I will consider a pretty big win. So, something else for me to play around with, I'm very excited about. As well as this Argus. So, I think I'm going to go grab the other Argus, and we might start cracking into this. I see we're missing a little window here. It's actually cosmetically in better shape than the one that I have and shoot on, um, simply by virtue that this isn't cracked peeling and hasn't been replaced by gaffer tape. Actually, the, uh, the focusing screens in here are really clean too. Nice. A little stiff, we'll see what we can do about that. So today's sort of a project day. Interesting. Fun. All right, let's go get out some screwdrivers and uh, we'll see what we can figure out about these, all these things. Be right back. So here's my Argus. Let's, uh, let's bring you guys a little closer in, shall we? Pretty sure mine doesn't have any film in it. No, we should be good. So I have mine set up with the little switch on the bottom because that's where I like it to push and cock it. Um, this one's... All right. Pretty, pretty similar. I've got a red filter on the top of mine. We're missing a little range finder window. Not that that's super important, although I will likely put something just to cover that. Keep crap from getting inside of it. Everything else looks to be in pretty good shape. I'm missing some more panels on the back of mine. on the inside, both of these. I like this one, still has a little Argus sticker. It makes me happy. Chewed up there, not so bad. It's two, four, three, eight, six, four. Versus seven five eight zero seven nine. Yeah, I mean it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Aside from all the sticky issues, so we'll see what we can do about those. I suppose. 
Give some inspiration here. I'm not super excited about having to pop some of the leatherette up to get into some of the things, but we will do what we have to. Fortunately, the Argus is a pretty simple camera, so I don't... Also, this one was $12, so I'm not too concerned if I... There we go. Lobo grease. kinds of stiff. Double check and do some research because it's been a minute since I've taken one of these apart. Well, first things first, let's get the front of the camera off, which means we get to peel back some of the leather at where are my feeler gauges. So there's a couple of screws in the corners here. There we go. It's all dry and brittle. Which we might be doing a video on replacing the leatherette because um, this one still needs it, obviously. This one might, depending on I guess while I'm working on this, we can talk a little bit about the Argus C3. Uh, it was the first camera that I learned how to shoot film on. I mean, aside from as a kid, I had a Kodak Star, a uh, little 110 film camera. I forget if there's a screw here or not. I know there'll be one in this corner. But in high school, when I learned how to shoot film, and shoot manually. Uh, I had I had an Argus C3 that was loaned to me for a couple of months. I don't really want to pull it any further up than I have to. There we go. Screw, screw, screw. I forget if there's one down here. So yeah, I shot on an Argus, and it was one of the first film cameras I purchased when I decided, oh, it'd be fun to get back into film again. Um, it was kind of the reason I got back into doing film again, because I found an Argus for 20 bucks, which I think part of the, the charm and joy of these is finding them for super cheap and dealing with what you get. I think I, I have a same, the same kind of relationship with Argus C3 that a lot of people do with the Holga. Part of the the charm of shooting with it is its quirks and you know they're old cameras at this point and they are all going to have some of their own quirks just due to their age and I think that's a large part of the fun. They're also super easy cameras to work on for the most part. I know that has some definite appeal to me. You still have that washer there, nice. So there's a screw here and one more up here. There's plenty of resources online as far as how to get into them and repair them. Highly recommend. 
looking up those resources. I'll put some links to the things that I will be referencing as I continue to work on this, just to make sure I don't get myself too in over my head. You can use just about anything for this step, really. A, you know, a little utility knife or a razor blade works well. Normally I would probably just use my pocket knife because it is thin enough to slide under, and stiff enough to make it pretty easy to pop up. There's that screw. So let's see if we don't have better luck with just the pocket knife at this step. We'll see how well I do today at keeping track of the timers. Make sure both cameras are actually recording. Yeah, ding. Oh good, nope, there's the screw. We're actually going to just carefully, maybe remove this whole piece because it is fond of cracking. I mean, you see how thin that leatherette is along the top and bottom. There we go. Yeah, whatever they cemented this with is long since dried. There we go. That'll make life easier. Okay. Screwdriver time. And we're going to put all of these in the orientation they were found because it makes life a little easier when you are putting it back together. Keep track of where everything goes. I like a good set of jeweler's screwdrivers, don't get me wrong. But sometimes it is hard to get the torque you need, especially on old stiff screws. So yeah, I put a couple, a couple of rolls through an Argus in high school. That's part of what I found charming about shooting film. I also had a, a Yashica F FX7 that I didn't get to shoot a whole lot because the, the mirror bound up on me. But I also enjoyed shooting that. Little, you know, it, it looks a lot like the Canon AE-1 uh, and handles pretty similarly. I likely would have continued shooting a lot more film had that not hung up on me. Let's see if I can, there we go. And right around that same time, there we go, uh, right around that same time, when I was shooting in high school, you could still pretty easily uh, go to CVS and get your pictures developed in an hour and still get your negatives back. But you know, I'm pretty sure this doesn't just lift out. It's, yeah. Although getting film developed costs add, you know, the cost adds up when you're in high school just about to start college. So I kind of fell away from it for a bit. And didn't really get back into it until know, two or three years ago. Yeah, you're all in there. All right, I'm just a little stiff. I got it going now. Screwed. You can just. 
just lift this off with a little twist to disengage the uh, shutter speed mechanism. Like I said, inside of these are dead simple. All right, cocked. Oh, duh, part of it is that it's currently set to bulb. Sorry, forgot about that. That's much better. Okay, okay. Well, while this is open, this looks like it needs a little bit of cleaning. Yeah, we're just a little crusty. Ugh. Tiny little crusty lens needs cleaning. I don't wonder if everything else is actually in pretty good shape. Where'd my dang blower go? It was probably in the other room. I mean, could use a little bit of dusting, but otherwise, everything looks pretty good. Clean up some of the sticky spots. Lens is pretty clean. There's a little hair in there. Oh, we got a crack in here, huh? Oh, would you look at that? I didn't see that earlier. Cool. It'll be fun to see what that does to the images. Oof, sticky. Yeah, it needs some some cleaning. I wonder if that's old grease in there that makes it so it gives it those hang ups. See, and that's that's my only complaint with KEH when it lists things like ugly or inoperative. And I know that they don't necessarily have the time to determine what exactly about it puts it in those categories. But if you like, I still would have bought it. Don't get me wrong for 12 bucks. If it was Argus C3, ugly cracked lens, that would have been nice to, to know ahead of time. Anyways, I'm going to go grab my little puffer and blower and we're going to put this back together and then check the range finder, make sure we're all de-dusted and try and remove some of the sticky bits that make some of these hard to turn. And uh, at least get it functioning smoothly, if nothing else. All right, a little blower. Yeah, get all that dust out. I'll keep it from being face down while we goose all this out. Okay. Should probably take the range finder apart, although it looks to be in pretty good shape. We can always do that later. Uh-huh. I wish I had my little lens cloth. Right, that should be much cleaner. Uh, what else do I need? A lot of people will tell you not to use Q-tips for cleaning camera parts and pieces, you get little fiber stuck places. Uh, you get dirt trapped in the cotton swabs. It can scratch your optics, but we're dealing with a $12 camera that otherwise probably wouldn't get fixed and would never get used. So if it works and it gets used, who cares? At least that's my opinion on it. Already feels a little better just from turning it. Let's use just a little bit of solvent. Let's see if we 
can't. Yeah. Loosen up whatever garbage was in there. Now I would still ideally like to take it apart so I could, instead of just flushing out, wipe out whatever is doing it. Worst case scenario, I still call that a win. Uh, that's another thing that I've been chastised for about. Uh, I was fixing my Metalist 2, which had its uh, focusing. The lens was gummed up. Again, uh, whether or not it came with the particular lubricant that caused the issue or someone did it after the fact, it doesn't matter. After decades, uh, some of that lubricant will turn uh, more functionally into cement. And oftentimes the solution is to gently work in some sort of well, lighter fluid tends to work well, uh, a solvent. And, you know, try and loosen things up. Uh, and a great persuader for loosening things up is uh, a pipe wrench. And someone was like, oh, you're going to break it. Well, I didn't. It works, and now it can be used. Uh, and I don't know how else you would have gone about solving that particular issue. Anyways, be aware of the risks involved with the different solutions towards fixing some of the problems, and if you're not confident in your ability or the chances of success and you're not willing to accept the consequences, uh, find someone more qualified to do it. Again, I don't mind tinkering around with a, an already broken camera or things along those lines. A cheap camera that I'm going to try and return some utility to that it otherwise wouldn't have. I'm happy to leave that as it is. So we shall turn our attention to the lens. It's probably going to get the same treatment, which I could do. Yeah, let's do that. If I don't have to take it apart, I might as well not. So we're just gonna put, again, a little bit of lighter fluid on this inside ring here. Uh, I should mention, you don't want to add a lot, and you don't really want to get it on other parts of the lens. You just want it on that helical, and let it kind of work its way around, and then ugh, you can hear the grit in there. Oh, we might be taking this apart to swab some of that out. Yeah, we should do that, because that grit does not fill my ears with pleasure. Pretty sure it's this screw. All right. One, two, yeah. There we go. And it just comes apart like that. Let's get all that gunk out of there. You know, a little bit of lubricant is nice. It gives you a nice damp turning, but when it gets to be too much or you get dirt in there with it, or it gets spread unevenly is when you get that binding chunky feeling. And that's no good. Too bad. On the plus side, the crack really seems to be the only issue with the lens, but man, it is right down in there, isn't it?
one of the nice things about the Argus is I feel it is one of the easiest helicals to, to mate back up. Um, I've taken apart some lenses that just do not want to go back together quite the same way. Um, and a lot of times what you can do if you have that issue is you kind of get your two screws on top of one another and turn it backwards very gently until you hear it settle like that and then you can try and get them to engage. Again for the Argus it's pretty pretty coarse so it just tends to go together on its own. Once I get this camera working uh, I've got a friend in Chicago who I think will enjoy using it and then I'm sure I will find another one at some point I will look forward to fixing that one as well maybe then I'll start to do some more fun things with it Let's see if I can't get this retaining ring off do you open wide enough For me, the Argus C3 is a lot like Telecasters are for my dad. Um, they are great project guitars, Telecasters, not an Argus C3, they're not guitars. Um, you know, they're fun to, to take apart and to tweak and to do different things to, and there's always something different to try with it. Come on now, there we go. Ugh. Yeah, it's all gummed up. Yeah, get you all cleaned off. Um, so, I would very much enjoy getting an Argus C3 and doing something weird with it. Don't know what yet. Like I said, maybe put some bellows on it would be fun. It would actually be a lot of fun to make like a bigger Argus shoots medium format film. Retrofit it. We'll see. Yuck. Yeah, it's all sticky and gross. Again, it doesn't take much for that to happen. You just, over time, dirt and crud mixes in with the lubricant. The lubricant gets gummy with age. That's why a lot of times if you get a new, well, new to you, get an old camera, it's, uh, getting a good CLA makes a huge difference. That's why it's nice if you have at least a little bit of confidence with disassembling things or you don't mind doing the research to find other people with the knowledge. It's not too hard to do a lot of it yourself. I mean, once you have some tools. There we go. And what I might do is add just a little bit of light lubricant. No grease, nothing heavy. Just the smallest little bit. I'll just dab it in right here. I don't feel any tight, grindy, bitey spots. That's nice. All right. Let's get this locking ring back on it. Come on, you. There we go. There we go. It's all nice and free. Put that lens back together. Mmm. Sorry. Isn't that so much nicer? 
I know a lot of it is feel, but dang. So what I just did was, um, like I mentioned before, once you lined the, the two screws up for the helical, um, I backed it up a little more until it engaged in the right part of the threads. It joined up where the set screw goes. Um, like I said, trial and error to get it lined up. If that's not how you would like to do it, you can also make a little mark, you know, like a little registration mark between these two bits. But I'm happy enough just to fuss around with it till I get it to line up. It's not a not a camera I would use when I'm looking for super high precision. So I'm not super worried. I'm not particularly worried if it doesn't exactly line up. I'm just backing all of these screws out and then retightening them a little bit. Mmm, much cleaner. Okay. Yeah, I wish we still had the range finder in on here. I might figure something out for that at some point. But in the meantime, I suspect we can just kind of put it all back together because uh, all the gummy bits are ungummed. I'll call that a win. here. Now that I got it all greasy with fingerprints. I should carefully set this back in here with my now greasy fingers. Good enough. All right. So if you set this like this, I don't know how well you can see it. That little bar swings out a little bit. The trick is to get this little bar to follow back in its slot. All right, I'm gonna clean this. It's disgusting and sticky and not great. While I clean it, the AC is going to soothe you with its gentle whooshing. We're just trying to get this lined up and then with the teeth, it's a mess. All right, that should be all lined up. Get the screw back in it. And that turns nicely. Get this all lined up. Slip that under that little retaining rod. Slide everything else into place. Ding, all the way down to 10. It'll get stiff and it'll pop back up 300. Score. 
All right. And all of this is back in. I can feel that the range finder isn't quite engaged the way it ought to be. I wish I knew where those marks were supposed to line up. So let's figure that out. Go ahead and fully extend the lens so this comes out. Pop that bad boy out. Just take you out of here for a second. Probably give that a wipe down too, because it's sticky and greasy. All right, so this is fully extended. goes that way and this goes this way. Beautiful. Fully extended. So now this part of the rangefinder system engages correctly and I might have to tweak the internal rangefinder bits, but that's fine. I'm happy to do this by parts. This is so gross. Make sure I stick a disclaimer at the beginning of the video saying that uh, I'm not a professional. Wouldn't necessarily recommend you do it the way that I do it. But, you know, I, I share myself doing something like this because uh, uh, you shouldn't be intimidated to, to try it. You don't have to be a professional to make your camera happy. And I can't think of many things worse than a old camera that has no reason not to be used. So these are great fun. Oh, you know what I forgot to put back in? <sighs> forgot to put in that little guy. While this is pretty clean, I'm also going to give that just a little, a little brush up while I'm here. All right. I'm just going to lightly get the smallest bit of dilute detergent and water on this Q-tip on one side and just ever so gently. Now the glue gave up. Neat. Well, that's another thing we can glue back together. I actually need to get my, uh, get the contact cement out. Oh well, it makes this easier to clean. That's the trick with most repairs. Um, I have, I would argue it holds true to repairing just about anything guitars, cameras, 
you know, what have you. A large part of being good at repairing things is rolling with mistakes and fixing them. I'm should keep moving. Yeah, if I was really good, I would also give this just a little little wipe down. else in here feels all right okay let's go get some contact cement and we'll start to put everything back together i suppose i thought we had toothpicks what else do i have more or less disposable that I can apply a small amount of contact cement with. Oh. I suppose we're going to use the end of the screwdriver. And we will just be very careful about wiping it off afterwards. I'm not doing this off screen, am I? Son of a gun, I suspect I am. So the nice thing about some of these applications is you really don't need much. All right. And let's just wipe that off very carefully on our shirt because that's what you do. Clothes are just really good napkins. place. Ding. Ever so carefully squish that back down. I want to let that sit for a bit. Yeah, I don't want to wait. It's fine. Yep, that's all in there. Set that up so that's out. Let's give you another Deep dusting, knock that stupid little lens out one more time. It's fine. All right. Slide that in here. Shutter cocking mechanism in. Beautiful. Now, we can put the screws back in. Yay! Once I have this in, before I tighten anything, we're going to give everything a, a quick rundown. No sense in tightening everything if you're just going to have to pull it all off again. There it goes. Nice and fiddly. Now, this doesn't necessarily go all the way down. What that really helps to do is it gives a stopping place for this and that's how you adjust the height and where the the winding lever stops so now we'll go a little further i wouldn't try anything how do i want it set up Do you want it 
Oh, I guess I can't go much further down. We'll check all those shutter speeds in a second. We're going to back it out slightly just because I do like it pointing down. Trial and error. Card full. Whoops. Well, guess that's where we end it. So what I can do to check the rangefinder is um, open up the back and put a piece of piece of scotch tape on the back, and use that basically as a ground glass. I can check to make sure that the range finder is aligned not that there are markings but I want to make sure that if what I see through the range finder matches up with the focused image on the back I wouldn't mind taking the lens apart one more time and tweaking the aperture a little bit but I gotta say it works well enough doesn't stick nearly as badly. So I will consider that a, uh, a success. And I will double check all of my shutter speeds. But everything feels like it lines up pretty well. And I will, I think all in all, consider that a pretty big success. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Next time we will crack into the little wall and sack and see if we can't loosen that up. Although, like I said, I don't really mind if it's stiff. Everything seems to work. More or less. Maybe not so much on the slower shutter speeds, but uh, oof. It doesn't quite want to go to 400, does it? But if that's the only problems it's got, I can work with that. Anyways, thank you guys for stopping by and checking this out. Come back. I'll probably be doing more. Anytime I can find a cheap Argus, I'm happy to crack into it and get it working and try and rehome it. And maybe we'll do some uh, fun projects with one of these at some point. Anyways, hope you guys are all staying safe, being well, and uh, being the best people you can be. I don't know. I will see you guys soon. Later.